Yeah, g'day guys. Uh, today we've got Garage Equipment Australia coming to install a lovely big two-post car hoist in, uh, in the Doing Stuff Garage. Here we go. my big uh, workshop area and you've probably seen in a previous video or two that I've done all the sarking in the ceiling and put some uh, fridge panelling insulation on the northern side and I've made a lovely big area here and I put big steel beams in because the shed itself has uh, big timber trusses which is all and good but I needed the height in the centre so I put two big steel beams uh, right in the center here and just happens to be the perfect width for a nice big car hoist now it's going to get a little bit cramped over on this side of the workbench because you look up that where the fluoro is that's the truss so we've got to keep it to the uh, left side of that so we got a little bit of room there we hopefully there's going to be enough getting around it and on the other side We've got, oh, we've got a bit more room except someone put a table there. Nice big workshop table, but I cut it into three pieces. So this one on the right here is on wheels. This one's uh, just got legs. And this big end piece is on a little casters as well. So all I've got to do is move them around out of the way and uh, it'll fit in here perfectly. We've got a few hundred mil between that truss just there uh to the where the post is going to be and some of the other side we've got a couple hundred mil on each side so i kind of worked in perfectly for that and i've already got it the unit powered previously when i had a bit of wiring done i got the electrician to put a 15 amp power point just up there to connect to the hoist onto this side so we're kind of uh ready for old mate to turn up he can't be far away uh but first i'll just move these couple of tables around a little bit and uh, give us the give us the space we need so i'll still have plenty of room here for doing welding projects and things like that but it's mainly uh, the car hoist is going to be for many many projects so i'll also be able to do my own sort of uh, car servicing and things like that for myself but uh, it's more about for projects making it easier to uh, easier to get the vehicle on and off of bodies and all sorts of four wheel drive type things and it'll just be damn handy anyway. So anyway, uh, I might about to turn up. We'll, uh, I'll set up the camera and we'll be able to watch the install. So here we go. Boom, heaps of room. Ah, uh, gotta love big deliveries. Oh yeah. So what we're having to do is uh, got to back the truck in because uh, it's about to piss down with rain and uh, makes the uh, install a whole lot easier. This guy's really good. He's a professional. Some bits to it. I'm glad it's you and doing the install on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, bolts, yeah. bolts, washers, and shims, and yeah, all sorts of bits and pieces. Things. Oh, yeah, you love your job. <laughs> Actually, I do love my job. Thank you. 
So two big, huge posts. <laughs> I need a bigger shed. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like dancing, isn't it, Danny? The uh, hoist installation came to a bit of a grinding halt. Apparently the concrete's not thick enough, so we've got to put all our disappointments aside and uh, just get into it. So we've got to cut a hole uh, on this side for where, because that's where the base size is. So it's got to be a metre by a metre uh, of thicker concrete. Uh, currently it's only 100 mil, uh, or just under 100 mil. And he tried in different spots, thinking oh, one bolt will be okay, two bolts will be okay. Nah, most of them were not good. So anyway, uh, the current slab is just under 100. So we're going to go, if we're going to dig it out, we might as well go 150 to 200. So it's just over a meter by a meter is the minimum requirement if I'm going to upgrade, if that they want me to upgrade uh, the slab to. So they said, yep, you can just cut it out as long as you tie it into the same slab. So we're going to do that. Uh, I've got a couple of big fans here to blow all the dust. Uh, silica dust from cement is very, let's just say it's not very good for your lungs in a very, very bad way. Uh, silicosis is a, a real thing. Look it up. Uh, it's, it's quite dangerous. So I've got dust masks. I've got fans to blow everything out of the shed. So hopefully we'll get it all out that way. I've covered up uh, all the sort of major things that I don't really want to have 200 tonne of dust on. Uh, but hopefully these fans do the job and just blow it out there and it just settles into the ground and then it's no issue. It's not asbestos, it's just uh, silica dust. So we're going to rectify this uh, hoist install problem just by putting bigger feet under it, I suppose, you could say. So it's going to be connected into the current slab and uh, I'll take you along for the ride. So then the hoist will be able to be installed. I'll mate will come back and uh, we'll get into it. So anyway, let's uh, start cutting and uh, see how thick this slab really is. We know it's less than 100 mil, uh, so it's not gonna it's not gonna be that pretty under there. Um, but I thought this slab would have been pretty good. It's you know it doesn't have any major cracks. There's no movement. There's no height indifferences. Uh, it's just not thick enough. So. Let's move onwards and upwards and uh, sort it out. So here we go, let's get cutting. Well, there you go. 
that's how you get a concrete uh, block out of a slab. Something a bit different. It actually isn't too too bad a material. Like I mean, they went to all the trouble of putting the black plastic on. They just didn't do it quite thick enough. So you can see a bit of steel just there, like a bit of reinforcing steel. And here's the other end of it. I did. There was a little bit of damage to the edge of the concrete, but that won't really matter. We'll just slurry a bit in there. Now let's uh, use the good old digger and dig a bit of dirt out. Dig it down 150, 200, and then work out a bit of steel and then we're ready for the pour. So before I start digging, I'll actually cut this one. I'll do that off camera though. Let's get into some digging. Well, there's the slabs. Come out in four reasonably sized pieces. Yeah, I'm glad I drilled those holes in the corner. Like, I mean, that made it so much easier. And, like, if you have a look at it, it's... Shit, it's close to 100. Just not close enough, I guess. So, I'll best go dump them. Then come back. And start digging. I've just started there. Uh, a couple little tree roots and just a bit of deco, uh, decomposed granite. So I'll dig all them out. We'll get some steel rolling. Let's get into that, eh? Here we go. So we're ready for some concrete, I think. So I've connected it into the slab with those bars there. And this big piece of 16 mil Rio is underneath the other slab and there's plenty of room around it for the concrete to get around it. And there's mesh and just a little bit of scrap underneath. That's a bit of scrap. There's 18 bars connecting the old slab to the new slab 
and we're well over 200 mil deep a thousand mil wide by 1200 long so i think that's kind of overkill as i tend to like to do this one's identical so nothing's actually touching the ground or the dirt or the outside of the current slab i think we're ready to order some concrete anyway uh we'll wait for the uh, truck to turn up and we'll get into it so here we go So the cement's in. We've just got to finish trailing it off and we're done. Looks so pretty. What do you reckon, Gary? Looks good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't have any unless you bought some.
Well, all the concreting's done. It's virtually gone off and it's got a nice smooth edge to marry in with the other. So when we're driving um, trolley jacks and anything with steel wheels across it, it should be just fine. So hopefully uh, overnight when I go and close the door, we don't have any possums deciding that they want to walk on it. Now we just wait for the, the hoist installer to come and do his job. So we'll catch up on that, eh? Here we go. Yeah, so we're back. Uh, been a bit over two weeks. So the cement is certainly cured and uh, the installer is coming today to finish off, put it all back together. Well, put it together. It was nearly together. Now he's going to finish it off. But what I've done in the interim, you know, because what you do when you're just sitting around, you do things. Uh, I've installed a few lights. Uh, there's a few, well they're all LEDs and I've replaced all of those boronol fluoros. I've got eight of them uh, hanging around the place and I've got an extra flood just there. So hang on, I'll just turn it on like at the moment. This is just the workshop, it's in the middle of the day so just hang on a second, I'll go and turn them on. So here we go, we'll turn them on, see what happens. Whoa, it is bright as. So that's in the middle of the, well sorry, it's in the middle of the morning and all the lights are on and man that's sort of like a day maker like i mean it's bright out here but it's very bright inside i'll take a picture later this afternoon once it's all done and uh, show you the difference uh, it, it's huge uh, i did start with four of those led lights the, they're proper uh, high bay lights they're called and they're only 150 watts each light. I started with four and it didn't really sort of like there was shadows everywhere. Like you, I'd stand over at the lathe and the whole lathe was in shadow like from me because the light was behind me. Like I had that light up there and then I so I installed that one. So it's right above the lathe and it's bright as. And same with this one over here. It's right over the uh, drill press and sorting bench and things like that. And I made this uh, post for the vice. If you haven't seen that video, uh, the link is down in the description. Because uh, I have did a few extra mods. I didn't just put a vice on a post. I put the welding uh, lead there and everything so it's connected. And this big lead just here, the one that comes out of the wall, it, uh, it's connected to the steel frame of the shed. So, And over here is where it's connected from my welder you can see it there it's connected from the welder to the shed frame so we've got a few little mods and I got rid of that big shelf there was a huge big shelf over there I uh, got rid of that and put my uh, wire wheel and a few other mechanical type workshoppy type tooly type things so I'll put a few extra things over there anyway so we're ready for old mate to uh, come and do his magic and do the install now um, I know for sure that the concrete is cured uh, and certainly cured enough for the big anchors that uh, old mates putting in apparently they're called a true bolt uh, I've never heard of them before they're a little bit different to a diner bolt uh, which is what I've always just used for concrete anchors but these are called a true bolt and apparently they just don't come out uh, the same way that they went in so yeah so about the uh, concrete curing uh, being 14 days I know for sure that it's plenty strong enough uh, because talking to the uh, technical division of the concrete company that I bought it from they said uh, after 14 days any concrete will be at 65% of its strength like its total strength so it needed to be 3000 psi in the book so we converted that to 20.6 MPA, which is what we use in Australia, MPA. So what they've done is uh, said in 14 days to have at least a 20.6 MPA, you'll need 40 MPA for total strength. So total strength becomes in 28 days, uh, just a bit of technical concrete stuff for you. So 28 days, it becomes total hardness as it's designed for its target. Uh, MPA. So at 65% at 14 days, it's going to be over the it's going to be over the 20.6 that's required. So we know we're all good. 
and uh, the installer is very happy with that that I've gone with a much harder concrete because in time it'll be better and stronger and will never fall over so anyway there's a bit of uh, technical uh, info uh, about uh, concrete and MPA in Australia so anyway we'll uh, after doing all the mods and everything that I've needed to do I've just got to wait for uh, Danny the uh, installer to come and do his magic I'll go and grab myself a brew and uh, go and wait for him to turn up he's due to turn up any minute now so here we go eh? So we're back. <laughs> Second time lucky. <laughs> Again, keep it going. <laughs> Just hooking up all the cables and the hydraulics. Nearly done. Most of it. Yeah, just put your rattle down and it goes. And then it's that's right. That's enough. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to count the kadooks. Yeah. I could duggers. Done. We now have ourselves a two post clear floor four ton hoist. I am so excited. I've had a hoist before many, many years ago, and I didn't realize how much I missed it. And once you've 
once you've had one or used one even in your home shop it makes a massive difference so anyway some of the really good features on this one uh, that I've noticed is it's got three stage uh, telescopic arms where normally the older ones only have two stage and these little funny trays these funny little plastic trays it's on the uh, it's just sitting inside the handle well I mean that's just a handle to swing the arm in but I mean what a good idea uh, but I come down and come with two oh, oh anyway uh, plastic tank instead of a metal one so when condensation does get in there it's not going to rust out the bottom of the tank so that's a bit of a bonus uh, has the old uh, lever stop uh, sorry the safety release and old mates even put a sticker on there for me there is the uh, fellow Danny that installed it did an exceptionally good job uh, went above and beyond uh, what he needed to do to get this hoist installed and uh, gave me heaps of advice on how and what and where and especially with the concrete slab and everything and you know how I had to cut the big hole on the bottom which was not fun but it was required uh, the manufacturer would not give any kind of a warranty without it so yeah now we just need to see what projects we can chuck on it and uh, so one of the other safety features that I noticed and apparently it's uh, a necessity nowadays is locks for arm locks that they're called uh, you lift up this little pin and it releases it has like a little uh, set of teeth there like on a half moon so when you raise the lift underneath is you can only see the bottom of the pins at the moment you can swing the arms in and about and everything as soon as you start lifting the hoist that pin the pressure off that pin and this drops down and boom it locks the arm so it can't actually move i, I never knew that so uh, the old one that i had many many years ago never had any features like that you could have easily uh, had movement of the vehicle while it was up in the air but these ones now apparently it's a requirement for a uh, for a commercial lift anyway comes all these little extensions and all that kind of stuff that's uh, fairly standard. Oh, here's an awesome feature. See, we got a rubber pad there. So when you open the door, it doesn't go and bang and scratch it. That's awesome. But uh, so job's done, and we got ourselves a hoist that's installed. And I've got big flashlights. Whoa, it's like Christmas. Feels like Christmas anyway. So now I've got all the good stuff in the shed. Oh, how nice are those lights? Don't they make a difference? Everything is so much brighter and easier. You're not scratching around, oh, get me a torch. Well worth the trouble. So link in the description for those. Uh, so I do recommend the bay, high bay lights. They're uh, very, very good. Uh, you can get like strip lights if you really wanted to, but I found the high bay lights, the higher you go, the better they are. So it is all good. Yeah, so I don't know if I'd actually tell anyone uh, that I've got a hoist. Uh, sort of like a ute. You tell someone you've got a ute and they help you want to move. So, uh, no, I definitely wouldn't be uh, telling anyone that i got a hoist. Oh, hang on. What's this? Hey, Jim. I hear you got a hoist now, mate. You <laughs> think I can check your rear end? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, mate. Yeah, bring it on in. No worries. Oh, uh, you're a funny guy. Watch out, Jigsy. Watch out. Yeah, that's pretty good. Very nice. Uh, you could go a tad that way. But that's all right. Yeah, about there if you like. Professional at action. <laughs> I guess that's the very important part in it about making sure where it picks up on. Correct. Because uh, you don't really want it going sideways. Have a solid bit, and then you test lift. Alright, Jim, all good to go. Let's go. We're on. Woohoo! We got left off. Perfect. How's the rear end look? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it needs to work. Oh, you got new shockies. I have new shockies. I couldn't wait for the hoist. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a oh, brake line done too. <laughs> oh, interesting. That, that looks good. It looks like it's meant to be there, doesn't it? Yeah, so guys, uh, now the hoist is all installed, I want to thank a few people. Uh, first one being uh, Garage Equipment Australia. Uh, they've been very, very helpful with the uh, install and the supply of the unit. Uh, they had them uh, sitting in their warehouse available, uh, the one that I wanted, and I'm sure they have quite a few of everything else. They do do larger uh, vehicle hoist install, like for trucks and things like that. They're not just uh, for small motor vehicles or things like that, but... Uh, this is one of their baby ones apparently so they do all sorts of uh so they also do uh exhaust pipe bending and machines and uh, tire fitting machines and all sorts of things like that so uh, we might see a bit more of garage equipment australia but uh, i'll leave a link below for them click on their website and uh, check them out they're they're very helpful they'll uh, they'd rather try and get a hoist that suits you than your uh, than being like the cheapest one or anything like that because you know, there's plenty of cheap uh, car hoists or, or car lifts out there, but uh, these guys are actually they actually try and help you out get the right the right machine to suit you. So I'd also like to thank uh, Danny, the installer. He was exceptionally good, making sure everything uh, was in place and square. And I'm, I'm a bit sort of symmetrical type person myself, so he made sure everything was straight and narrow and, and lined up and was all good. Anyway, so uh, even though he had to come back a second time, but uh, it was it's worth the extra call out anyway to make sure that everything's done right. Anyway, so uh, he helped me out even with the Congress lab that I had to upgrade, uh, which was good. It's better to have it uh, upgraded and right than it is to uh, just stick it on any old concrete and then have a vehicle. Uh, you put it up to its uh, lifting limit and then the damn thing falls over. Uh, that wouldn't be real good for the vehicle or yourself if you're under, the, under it. So anyway, that, that's uh, really appreciate Danny helping me out and his details will be below as well. And also I'd like to thank Gary from AMC Restorations. He helped me out with the concrete pour the other day uh, or a couple of weeks ago uh, when we did it. And uh, like it gets a bit hard when you're doing it by yourself if you don't do it all the time. And I really appreciate him helping me out with that. So uh, guys, if you've seen value in this whole uh, video, the process of me trying to get this hoist installed, I uh, really appreciate it if, you, uh, if you've seen value in it, uh, certainly uh, consider subscribing and you'll be able to see all sorts of unusual builds coming uh, your way. But anyway, uh, guys, uh, thanks for watching the video and sticking around so long, it's not a short video. Give us a thumbs up and uh, we'll catch you on the next one, eh? See ya. Oh, Gary, oh, you realised I had a hoist. Uh, yeah, hi, uh, Jim. Uh, uh, I, I won't be long. I won't be long. Anyway, uh, soon. Thanks. Sure. <laughs> Shouldn't have told anyone. <laughs>